I mean, I want to ask you a question. If God is all loving, what about Sodom and Gomorrah? Huh? If God is all loving and sprinkling uh, love dust everywhere, fairy wings flying like uh, 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 Twink Tinkerbell, what about the worldwide cataclysmic flood in, in Genesis chapter 6? What? Where's the sprinkling of love dust there? I mean, where's all the, we're all one big human family. Where's that? Where's the love there? If God is this all-consuming God of love, and that's it, then why is there a judgment? Why is there a hell? Why is there a lake of fire? Oh, that's why all the preachers are preaching there's no hell today. Because they're making God into this God of love. Amen. And what you've done is you've elevated love above the God of love and you've created an idol called love. And you think anything that you accept, this falls into the category of this weird, freaky kind of ungodly love. Because it ain't, it ain't the love of God that you're talking about. You think the love of God just accepts everything. Again, I ask you, what about Sodom and Gomorrah? What about the worldwide flood? What about the lake of fire and judgment day at the end of the book of Revelation? I thought God was all loving. He accepted everybody. We're all God's children. We're all big, one big happy family. No. The Bible declares the wicked will be turned into hell. In all the nations that forget God, America, you've forgotten the God of the Bible and you've made a new God. It's called the God of love, the God of tolerance, the God of acceptance, the God of, I don't know what, it's weird, man. I can't even put a word on it. You know what I'm talking about, brother. It's weird, man. It's not the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible, the Bible says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God, not a loving God. Get the word right. When the angels saw God in Isaiah chapter 6, they didn't say, love, love, love. They said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. They didn't say, love, love, love. There is a misconception. There is an erroneous perception of the God of the Bible, and it's being fueled by the wicked, ungodly agenda of men. And it's purporting that God is all loving and all forgiving and everybody goes to heaven when they die. Well, they only got part of it right. Everybody will stand before God on judgment day in heaven. But not everybody's staying. A lot of you will be leaving. Now, I don't plan on leaving. I'm going to stay in the presence of God forever by His grace and power. Hallelujah. I want to live forever with Jesus. But there's a qualifier. There's a qualifier. I'm not talking about praying a prayer. I'm not talking about giving a hundred bucks in the offering plate. I'm talking about giving your life to Jesus all the way. And you need to do that. You need to do it right away. Because you're not guaranteed a space of time where you have all this extra time to kind of think about it. The Bible declares, today is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. The Bible says, do not harden your heart in the day that you hear God's voice. God is speaking to you. He's dealing with you about selling out to Him for, for real. Oh man, you need to move. That's God in His mercy speaking to you, telling you, man, you need to sell out all the way. Give everything to Jesus. Your money, your wife, your kids, your job. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, sir. You got it wrong. He said, Jesus, don't give me no money. Well, I tell you this. Jesus gives you life. He gives you breath. He gives you oxygen to breathe. He gave you a planet to live on. I tell you this. God's speaking to you. God's dealing with you. You need to move now. You keep rejecting God. You keep uh, resisting the, the conviction of the Holy Spirit in your life. There's going to be a time where he's not going to do it anymore. 
He's just going to give you over. He's just going to let you go. And boy, isn't San Francisco the epitome of that statement. The armpit of California, the rectum of the whole world, right here, San Francisco, given over to reprobation. Men openly flaunting homosexuality like it's some sort of badge of honor. Women giving up the natural use of men and flaunting their lesbianism like it's some sort of a uh, good thing and oh look I've come out of the closet let me tell you something God saw you in your closet the whole time and you should have been praying you should have been calling out to God but instead you're being a pervert God's going to judge you for that God's going to judge you for that oh man I don't know how much clearer God can make it to you today sinner be reconciled to God Sinner, come to Jesus Christ today. Sinner, be saved. Oh, Jesus Christ can give you a new heart, man. A clear conscience. Void of offense. Before God and before men, you can walk with it. You know what it means to walk with a clean conscience? Oh, man, it's awesome. It means you know that your sins are forgiven. And you know that God's favor is on your life. I'm not talking about you get a new BMW and you're CEO of a court. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about how big bank bank count. I'm not talking God's blessing. The Bible says God sent Jesus to bless you in turning you all away from your iniquity. To be blessed means you've been turned away from sin. Hallelujah. And you've been forgiven by the power of the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ's blood cleanses you. I'm talking about being blessed by God with salvation and there's no fear of the Lord among you I declare to you openly that your lifestyle of abomination your pride your arrogance your flaunting of your sexual sin it offends God it makes God want to puke and I openly rebuke you all and you walk around in apathy and indifference you will reap what you sow people you'll reap what you sow and it's coming soon. It may not come today. It may not come tomorrow. But when it comes, you'll remember the preacher preached to you and said, repent, turn to Jesus Christ, stop being a hypocrite, start loving God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength, love your neighbor as yourself, do the will of God, turn from your sin, put faith in Jesus Christ, obey the Bible. You're going to remember the preacher preaching to you. You're going to say, oh, well, it's me. I should have listened. I made fun of him. I made light of it. But now's your time. Now's the acceptable time. Now's the day. Today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Don't harden your heart against Jesus. Jesus, he only loved you and died for you. Now he's going to come as a terrible and vengeful judge. The Bible says... That he'll return one day. I don't know which way's east. Let me get my bearings here. It's that way. That way? How do you know? I live here. Oh, really? So that's east? Yeah. Oh, excellent. Thank you very much. One day the Bible says that the eastern sky will split and roll back like a scroll and Jesus will come back riding on a horse and he'll have ten thousands of ten thousands of his saints coming to execute judgment and all the ungodly people and all their ungodly deeds who work their ungodliness as ungodly about 16 times in like three verses. It's amazing. And Jesus coming back, he's not going to come back as a little baby going, where, where, mommy, God, oh, man. He's not going to come back with his little fairy angel wings and his pixie dust and his little magic wand sprinkling love and mercy everywhere. He's going to come back with flaming fire. He's going to take vengeance on all them that know not God and not obey the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is mad and he's coming back to execute judgment. You people make up your own God who love, love, love. I'm telling you, you need to obey the God of holiness. Why would I want to hold it down when everybody's going to hell, lady? Why would I want to turn it down? I wish I could put a, micro, uh, a speaker on every corner of every building when I preach. 